Yo dude, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to show you how to paint plasma that glows brighter than the sun itself. Let's get to it. So we've all tried to paint plasma with a nice glowing effect. For a lot of us that have got an airbrush, it's one of the first things you're like, now I can do some OSL, here we go, I've got plasma glowing effects coming everywhere. Now there are people that have done it in a variety of different ways. Some like Chris Buxley, for instance, will hollow out a miniature and will install LEDs. And you can see some of his work on screen now. But a friend of mine, Joe, has got the absolute best way, I feel, of representing a glowing plasma effect. And here's some of what he's done. This is his Instagram, Novice Sanguine. And as you can see, it is some pretty phenomenal stuff. I had the pleasure of playing Joe at No Retreat 9, where I was lucky enough to take home the win. But all the way through, looking at his army for the event and previous events where he's put up pictures of his army, the, the standout thing from all of that is this incredible plasma glow. Now, he put up a tutorial on his Instagram recently showing you how to do all that. I asked him if I can make a video out of it and give it a go myself. And well, the results, you'll see. As a quick disclaimer, <laughs> It's a lot easier to do this on a very big, very new plasma gun than on something small. That's what she said. <laughs> and uh, I'm happy with the result at the end. So a little bit of a spoiler, I guess, but there, there you go. That's, that's coming. That's what she said. Wasn't the smoothest ride ever though. That's what she said. Okay, so step one is to paint all the parts of the gun in the way you would normally paint the gun. So highlights, everything else as normal. Just don't worry about painting any of the plasma core. Next, get your pre-highlight down. I use a mix of two parts flow improver, one part ink, one part water. Get a very thin, very easy control mixture and then spray that towards the bottom part of the gun. You're looking to create a glow around the bottom of the plasma cores that spills over onto the casing of the gun itself. Once that's ready and down, get yourself some red ink. I'm using Flame Red from Dalarani, mix one to one with Flow Improver, and just gradually building up a set of passes over that till I get a good rate of opacity. I'm not looking to get it all down super bright, super hard in one go. Just want to build that up gently. Now, if you're new to the channel, don't forget you could hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to get notifications of all the videos that we produce. Also, you can join our Patreon where you get more videos just like this one, or come and join in on Twitch where I stream four days a week. Links to both in the description below. So the obvious question you're gonna have is, Jay, why do I need to buy a load of inks? I've already got shelves of paint. I've bought pots of paint I needed for one model and I've got loads of that left. So why do I now have to go out and buy even more hobby products that I might only use for this one thing? And if I'm honest, the answer is that you don't. But acrylic ink and acrylic paint are very similar if you think about it from the perspective of there's some pigment that's been ground up and it's put in a liquid to create a suspension but they're very different if you think about the size of the granule of pigment so the grind essentially and the thickness the viscosity of the solution acrylic ink is designed to flow through fountain pens airbrushes um, just used with a brush to be very translucent on a painted surface, whereas acrylic paint is commonly designed to go up through just a regular paintbrush onto a model and get a decent coating of a surface in one, maybe two passes. The best thing about acrylic inks is they are powerful. Because the grind of pigment is much smaller than that that you'd find in a regular pot of paint, once you've put that onto the miniature, it creates a very powerful coverage so you can get really really vibrant results with just one or two passes of ink now in this video i've been using ink thinned with flow improver simply because it's 30 something degrees in the studio today and if i don't and i don't use the drying or retarder properties of flow improver it will just dry on the needle i'll get something that comes out that's quite speckly and that will ruin the effect you don't necessarily need to, but I do. It's also the way I prefer to work. I'd rather do several thin passes using that than one pass using the ink and risk it being too much in one place. But there you go. That's why you should buy inks. For certain things, they're an absolute game changer and the sort of thing that you will use for the first time and go, why haven't I been using this? 
Next step is to get a gloss varnish down. You want to make sure you've got a solid coat of this everywhere you're planning on doing the next step of the mold. Because the next step we're going to be using, well actually you'll see what I did in a minute, but the next step would be to use some white ink to get inside the recesses and this will help minimize the surface tension to allow that to happen. You know sometimes how you get a genius idea and you think that, that's going to do it. That's going to do it. My genius idea was to use oil paint instead of white ink to hit the recesses. Now, the application of paint went on really, really well. I found that I had no issues, in fact, making sure every single one of those recesses was filled with oil to give me something that's pure white, happy days. Perfect. The less stress way of hitting every single one of those recesses. However, we got to a point where I then needed to clean the surface oil off might have been the weather but even after letting it dry and hitting with a hairdryer to really try and cure all of that oil paint the cleaning process took too much away from the inside the little troughs between each of those little plasma coils it meant that when i finished the uh, paint job with that last pass which we'll get to shortly i wasn't really happy with the result it's a shame sometimes this happens in the name of experimentation when you're trying a new technique as well and i did deviate from the plan so Back to the drawing board. We painted everything black apart from the extremities of the glow, knowing I'd paint something that matched it. And we went right back to step one. Step one was pretty easy. We went straight into step two and we got the highlight down for the white. So once again, just getting a nice set of thin coats there. After that was done, obviously we're gonna start building up the red for step three, getting that hue down. And again, I'm using flame red Dalarani ink from this. Uh, in Joe's examples, he's his greens, he's painting blood angels. You can use any color you want, but really you want a darker color for this section and a lighter color for the last section. So after putting the red down, I realized I'd made a bit of a mistake with the white. I'd built it up a little bit too high up the coils and it needs to be just in the recesses there, leaving the coils themselves black and the glow coming in from behind them. What I did was took a Q-tip, put some uh, isopropyl alcohol on the tip and just gently rubbed away at the white that got onto the quills themselves. I ended up doing this a few times throughout this process just to correct things. And if I'm honest, whilst this may not be the best way to go about doing it, it certainly helped me out. Just make sure your Q-tip isn't completely dripping with isopropyl so you can keep it on the Q-tip and just affect the surface of the miniature rather than it dripping down into those troughs and removing the white paint, which is kind of the issue I had with the inks as well. So with a bit of practice, you'll obviously be a little bit better at this. As a first attempt, I think it went kind of okay. And now to the real step five, not the J step five, which is to pin wash all of those recesses with white. So we're using white ink that will just flow a little bit more readily into the recesses. It is thin, but it still has that really, really strong pigment strength we talked about earlier on that inks have as one of their fundamental properties. Make sure you hit every single one of those power cells. And I find this particularly hard to get in between them, which meant I ended up cleaning up some of that surface uh, ink again. But that little tip with the Q-tip really did help me out. The important line though is right here. You need to make sure you've got a solid foundation for that uh, glow to start emanating from. Now we add more of a hue with our glow. I'm using a bright orange here. Actually, I'm using Scarlet from Dalarani, which is another fantastic ink from their line. Basically, you need a lighter color here than you do on the bottom. This is something I didn't really understand about this technique until I read Joe's guide. That's why there's such a nice uh, transition from the brightest area of the glow up to the rest of the coils. Fantastic tip there. Thanks very much, Joe, for producing the guide. And again, the links to Joe's Instagram in the video description below. So do go and give him a follow if you've liked this technique. His artwork is absolutely spot on. I then added a little bit of a glow to some of the areas around Azrael. So just spill over onto things like the helmet, the wings, the shoulders, a little bit around the chest and so on, just to finish him off and make it look like this gun belongs in the scene. I'm going to leave you with some B-roll pictures of Azrael. If you've enjoyed the video, if you'd like what you've seen here, then please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. You know, you can come and join in on Patreon. And of course, we do stream on Twitch four days a week. All the links to that will be in the description below, including times of the show. Thanks to all of you for watching, and I hope you will uh, tune in for the next video. Peace out, guys. Have a good one.